We don't really know the athletes that we watch on TV every week. It may seem like we do through stories, interviews, social media, or even charity events, but we don't really know them personally, do we? Well, when literally everyone that ever met the player in question has nothing but praise and love for his character, it all kind of adds up. There's no wonder why so many sports fans build up such a close relationship with their favorite players, despite probably never meeting them in real life. It feels real. And so when that player tragically leaves this world, it is absolutely devastating. It can feel like you lost a personal friend. A lot of people felt that way with Demarius Thomas. He was often described as a pure soul with a warm personality too good for this world. And his former teammates would know better than anyone else. But off the field, he was every bit as good a person as he was a player. Given that I personally did not know Demarius, I feel I am unqualified to speak on who he was as a person, so I'll just leave that to those who know him best. There have been quite a few moving feature stories written on him that I will link in the description below. However, I want to honor Demarius in some fashion, so I'll focus on the latter part of that Peyton Manning quote. Saying that Demarius Thomas was as good a person as he was a player is a hell of a statement because he was a damn good football player whose career has gone underrated for far too long. It's time for a reminder. When the greatest quarterback of all time says that you were one of the biggest reasons that he decided to sign with your team, you know you were something special. The other thing I'll say is, I mean, he was a big reason why I came out here to play. Um, I, I, I knew what he had done in just two years, but I also knew what I, uh, what he was capable of doing. And uh, that was a big part of the attractiveness of coming out to play for the Broncos. For, so for so many reasons, I'm very indebted and thankful to Demarius. Now, we all know that Manning and Thomas formed one of the most prolific quarterback receiver tandems in NFL history during their short time together. But back then, a casual observer just looking at the stat sheet might have been confused as to why Manning chose Denver in 2012. Thomas didn't even crack 900 yards in his first two seasons combined, but people who actually watched him play knew the potential was there for him to explode. He was just held back by nagging injuries and, to put it bluntly, some of the worst quarterback play in NFL history. Thomas began his career by putting up 97 yards and a touchdown in his first game on eight receptions, which is tied for the seventh most in a player's NFL debut. Thomas missed six games in his rookie year and was banged up in others thanks to forearm, ankle, and head injuries. However, the shining moments were there, like when he roasted all-pro cornerback Darrell Revis, who was in his prime at the time, for a score. Granted, a limited sample size, but Thomas was second in the league in yards per route run as a rookie. A similar story occurred in his sophomore season, in which he missed time due to a torn Achilles and a broken finger. When he returned, he was catching passes from Tim Tebow. As the season heated up, however, he quickly established himself as the lefty's favorite target, putting up over 400 yards and three scores in December alone. His monster 144-yard, two-score performance in Minnesota was one of three 100-yard games Thomas had with Tebow, and I'm sure you can guess the final one. Against one of the best defenses in the NFL, Thomas recorded 204 receiving yards, the second most in a playoff debut ever. 80 of those came on the final play of the game as Thomas ran a simple 15-yard post route, gave Ike Taylor a mean stiff arm, and outraced Ryan Mundy the rest of the way to the end zone to win the game on the first play of overtime basically all by himself. That play understandably gets all the pub, but don't forget that Thomas roasted Taylor all night. It was just one of three 50-plus yard receptions for Demarius on the night. Only Randy Moss and Antonio Brown have ever had more than one such catch in a playoff game since 1994. That hot finish to the 2011 season is partly what enticed Peyton Manning to join Denver the following season, and that was when the magic happened. Thomas's dominance over Pittsburgh continued as he put up over 100 yards and scored on a 71-yard screen pass to give the Broncos a lead in the second half of the season opener. Thomas wound up making his first career Pro Bowl in 2012 as he finished 4th in the NFL with 1,424 receiving yards and 7th in TD receptions with 10. He had 7 100-yard games, which more than doubled his previous career total, and he was only getting started. The following year, the Broncos put together one of the most prolific offensive seasons in NFL history, and Demarius was at the forefront. And once again, it started with a bang. 
161 yards and two scores and a blowout win against the defending champion Ravens, including a 78-yard touchdown, which was Manning's record-tying seventh of the night. So make that back-to-back -back years, Thomas put away an AFC North opponent with a long score on a screen pass in Week 1 on NBC. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? All in all, Thomas finished with his second consecutive 1,400-yard double-digit TD season as he finished fourth once again in the former and second in the latter statistic. His 14 scoring grabs are tied for the most in a single season in franchise history. He had four separate multi-touchdown performances in 2013, including his first three-score game in Week 10 against the Chargers. He led all wideouts in receiving DYAR, which is a metric showing total value. And even with his volume, he was still 7th in DVOA, the efficiency equivalent of DYAR. And it's silly to even bring up, but you're mistaken if you think even a little bit that Thomas was just a product of Manning's great play. Demarius led all receivers with 706 yards after the catch in 2013. And that's also not due to volume, as he was 2nd among wideouts with at least 50 targets in yak per reception. That's what being built like a running back with elite speed will do for a receiver. As the Broncos made their Super Bowl run, Thomas showed a knack for stepping up on the big stage. He caught a TD in each of Denver's three playoff games, put up 134 yards in a dominant win over New England, and caught a then-record 13 passes in the Super Bowl. The Broncos may have lost handily to Seattle, but it was by no means the fault of Thomas. Following the loss, Thomas was a man on a mission the next year, as he somehow improved his game once more. Despite a slow start to the season with an average of 47 yards in his first three games, Thomas soon exploded as he put together a career-best 226 yards in Week 4 against the Cardinals, continually roasting Antonio Cromartie on his way to two scores in the 41-20 victory. That marked the best single-game yardage mark in team history. It also marked the start of a historic stretch of games for Demarius. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six but seven straight 100-yard games. Calvin Johnson and Adam Thielen are the only players in NFL history with longer streaks. The streak ended with a measly 10-catch, 86-yard, 3-TD performance against Miami. Imagine how good you have to be for that to be a down game. Thomas finished the season second to only Antonio Brown in both receptions and receiving yards, though he once again had to settle for second-team All-Pro behind Des Bryant, who led the league with 16 TDs. However, Thomas's 1,619 yards that year still stand as the most in Broncos history, and DT's 2012 and 2013 seasons also rank 4th and 5th respectively on that list. He had 10 total 100-yard receiving games in 2014. Only Calvin Johnson in 2012 and Michael Irvin in 1995 ever had more in a single season. He was 4th in PFF grading and 2nd in yards per route run with a 2.78 number. He was also 8th in DYAR and became the only player to put up 300 plus DYAR in each of 2012, 2013, and 2014. The Broncos went one and done in the playoffs with an injured Manning, but Thomas secured another TD reception, making it 6 in 7 postseason games played. 2014 was Thomas's third consecutive 1400 yard 10 plus TD season. Jerry Rice and Marvin Harrison are the only other players in league history to meet that feat. And along with those two, Randy Moss and Larry Fitzgerald are the only other receivers with three or more total such seasons in their careers. Four no-question Hall of Famers and Demarius Thomas. Think about that for a second. 2015 is when Peyton Manning's body caught up to him and he fell off a cliff. And while Thomas didn't match his previous gaudy numbers, he still performed like a pro bowler, proving himself to be QB proof. Manning was PFF's 30th graded passer, while fill-in Brock Osweiler wasn't much better at 28th place. And yet, Thomas still put up 1,300 yards, finishing 7th in both that category and in receptions. Despite all the inaccurate passes, Thomas still had a 2.21 yards per route run, which was good for 11th in the NFL, and he also broke the 5th most tackles in the league among wideouts. He was always one wide receiver you could count on to pick up a first down himself. Thankfully though, he didn't have to do it all himself that year as Denver's menacing defense carried them to the Super Bowl and Demarius Thomas could finally call himself a champion.
Now, looking back on that four-year stretch Thomas played with Manning as a whole, it's hard to find many receivers with such an extended period of dominance. From 2012 through 2015, Thomas finished top three in basically every meaningful statistical receiving category. He was second to just Antonio Brown in both receptions and in receiving yards over those years. He was third in touchdown catches and second in multi-TD performances. He also led all players with 27 100-yard games, and he was one of just three receivers to eclipse two yards per route run in each of those four seasons. Thomas's numbers declined in the following years after Manning's retirement and Osweiler's departure, as the Broncos were stuck with second-year seventh-rounder Trevor Simeon, who had zero NFL pass attempts to his name prior. However, one might argue that this is when Thomas's greatness truly shined through. Despite the circumstances, Thomas still went over 1,000 yards for the fifth consecutive year. He was top 15 in both receptions and receiving yards in 2016. He finished with an 80.4 PFF grade, making it five straight years among the top 20. And in the process, he broke his own franchise record with 13 consecutive games with five or more catches. In 2017, however, Simeon's already not great play fell off a cliff, and Denver shuffled him, Paxton Lynch, and a returning Osweiler in and out of the lineup. It was Thomas's first non-1,000 yard season since 2011, but he still nearly doubled the yardage output of Denver's second leading receiver. Even as he lost a little burst and his QBs became less accurate, Thomas simply adapted to still produce. He had 17 contested catches in 2017, and his rate on such players was fourth best in the NFL. However, with the Broncos again floundering out of the gates in 2018, they decided to get a head start on their rebuild and ship Thomas off to a contender for draft capital. Demarius joined Deshaun Watson in Houston and his career looked like it may be revived with a talented young QB. In his first game with the Texans, Thomas helped them defeat his former team with three catches for 61 yards. Two weeks later, he had his first multi-score game since 2015. The Texans went 5-1 with Thomas in the lineup before he unfortunately went down with a non-contact injury in Week 16 as they made their playoff push. Torn Achilles, done for the year. Demarius joined the Patriots in the offseason, though he only lasted four and a half months there and suited up for just a single game. Granted, in that one preseason performance, he got 7 of 8 targets for 87 yards and 2 touchdowns. He was released for cap reasons, re-signed three days later, and then traded to the receiver-needy Jets a week later. However, the impact he left on his New England teammates in such a short period cannot be overstated, as evidenced by the numerous social media tributes. He similarly made a sizable impact with the Jets, despite playing in just 11 games there. He was acquired in September, and already by November, his teammates had named him a team captain. Fellow captain Steve McClendon said, quote, It's because everybody respects the man, the young guys and the older guys. Demarius is a man of few words, but when he does say something, you take it to heart. Plus, he has gone and been to where we all desire to go and be. 24-year-old receiver Vincent Smith, who spent a brief time in Houston, said that Thomas was the reason he even came to the Jets. Thomas spent just the one season in New Jersey, but once again, his impact was felt. Fittingly, his final NFL reception was also his final touchdown. Thomas officially announced his retirement on DenverBroncos.com in June 2021. He finished his career just 2,000 yards behind Rod Smith for the most in franchise history, and just 8 touchdowns behind him. And this was all while playing 58 fewer games than Smith. His 33 100-yard games are the most in team history. He, Von Miller, and Pro Football Hall of Famers Shannon Sharp and Steve Atwater are the only Broncos to make five consecutive Pro Bowls, if we count the year that he would have made it as an alternate, if not for playing in the Super Bowl. He is one of the greatest players in Broncos history, which is telling for such a storied franchise. He is all but guaranteed a spot on the team's Ring of Honor, which President and CEO Joe Ellis basically said the day they traded him to Houston. For more than a brief period, Demarius Thomas had a legitimate argument for being the best wide receiver in the entire NFL. He was the centerpiece to an offense that broke nearly every single passing statistic. He was truly the complete receiver. 
He ran a 4-4-3-40, even while being one of the bulkier receivers in football. He could outmuscle and outleap any defender for the ball, and combining his speed and athleticism with his physicality made him the toughest receiver to bring down after the catch. If not for constant, unfortunately timed injuries, Thomas might just be a lock for the Hall of Fame. And now I take you back to that Peyton Manning quote. Off the field, he was as good a person as he was a player. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is reserved for the elite of the elite, and there's no question Demarius had the talent to fit those hallowed halls. So think for just a second what that says about his character, when seemingly everyone who knew him agreed with that sentiment. On and off the field, he was described as genuinely selfless, always giving back and putting others first. He had so much more life to give and he has gone far too soon, but the impact he had on people will never be forgotten. May he rest in peace.